Hey, Anthony, I just wondered what you've noticed so far from Montrez, uh, especially tonight, and kind of how that bench uh, impacted and, and how, how you play next to him, and how you think that will play moving forward. Yeah, um, he's a hell of a player. Uh, he brings that energy, that spark off the bench. Um, he's able to, you know, get to his floaters. Uh, he, he stays on the glass offensively for us to get get us extra possessions. Um, great at defense, continue, continually learning, continuously learning to, to uh, adapt to our system uh, on, on both sides of the ball. But you know, when you're a special talent, you know, like he is, he's able to adapt quickly. So uh, when he comes in, we know we're going to bring that energy, whether we're down or up. He's going to bring that spark for us to you know, get us back in games or increase leads. You guys won 17 straight games in the West on the road last year. And of course, the sold out crowds, right? You got a lot of Laker fans, but also the home fans going hard against you. What has it been like these last three without that element, or at least without close to that? And, and how, is there a different way that you guys have to kind of find some motivation and such? Uh, we have our own motivation. Uh, obviously, you know, with the fans, it, uh, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, especially with the Lakers, you know, they travel so well um, and visit in arenas that we're able to feed off their energy. Um, but like I said, we have guys like, you know, Trez West, you know, even in our starting unit. Um, we got to re bring our own energy. Uh, you know, Duds, QC, Costas, and Devontae, uh, you know, all these guys bring that energy and always talking to us, hyping us up uh, when we're on the floor. Um, you know, those guys might not play a lot, um, but, you know, you know, they find ways to, to help us win, you know, especially tonight. You know, they were able to, you know, stay in our ear, um, just tell us to keep playing. A lot of shots wasn't falling. For a couple guys, especially early, um, and they, and they were those the guy those the guys who was able to you know tell us keep going, bringing that energy, clapping for us and things like that, like that, telling us we'll be all right. So, um, no, we definitely have to find our own energy, but I think we did a good job uh, uh, finding that energy while we were on the road. Maybe you guys used the late run to put this one away, and one of the early buckets in the run was you playing two man game with LeBron rolling him, hitting you the pocket pass, and you go for the floater. I, I want to know if you can tell me about the origins of that shot when you incorporate it into your game. Is that back in Chicago days before you, you grew up? Okay, if you didn't see my floater all last year. Not that much. I'm like, what? I was probably in New Orleans. I used to do it all the time. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, me and Trey just had an argument about who has the best floater as a big. You know, I, I – my floaters, I'll bring it out more for you guys now, but are you serious? Did you guys hear that? Oh, the they hurt? Are you stupid? I have it all the time. <laughs> well, I, I, maybe not, no. maybe not in, a, in a six point game with three minutes to go. No, yes, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, Bron does a great job of getting downhill and putting pressure on the big and, and reading that <laughs> and reading, reading that play, um, reading the defender. So, uh, you know, he either finished the, the layup or. Or his, you know, I don't know if he have a good floater or not, but his little midi jump shot and then, you know, or hit the pocket pass to me or skip it weak side for a three. So um, we just try to, you know, figure out ways to exploit the defense and all their schemes, especially, you know, with their bigs playing back uh, tonight. Um, but, you know, I've, I've always kind of had the floater. Uh, and it really just came from when I was um, my early years uh, in the league. And I wasn't the strongest guy in the world, so you know um, I kind of hated just going to the paint and just, you know, you, when you're a rookie, second year, you don't really get many foul calls. So I just kind of developed that floater to, you know, stop from going into, you know, the lane and getting fouled. Kyle, um, just especially after the first quarter you guys had today, um, what do you miss the most when KCB and Alex? both can't play in the same position and, and how does it scramble your defense um, you know to start games like that yeah I mean I think we did a good job tonight to start um, it kind of just fell off but you know KCP you know is one of our best defenders and he's going to guard you know the the you know, best wing uh, especially a guy who that shooter who's flying around but like he probably was started on Dylan Brooks for sure tonight um, you know AC you know also a tough guy picking up 94 feet he was able to um, also be our backup PG. And so now it's, it's a scramble when Brown and Dennis is out there, you know, 
one get in foul trouble and the other one gets tired or something. Now, you know, we bring Taylor in for a PG, but, you know, Taylor more of a two guard. So we don't really have that, you know, that true PG that we usually have when Alex is around. Um, but we adjust. But, you know, it, it's tough not having those guys. You know, they're a big part of our, of our team and our offense. And we were able to – we were able to have those guys on the floor. <laughs> we were able to have those guys on the floor. Um, they just bring a different dynamic for our team. Uh, last two, Dan. I'll give you a minute. Hold Go on. ahead, Dan. Oh, yeah. um, with, with, the, with the compressed <laughs> offseason, though, uh, <laughs> with the compressed offseason and, and kind of the nature of this season um, with no fans and stuff like that, how much are you going to have to monitor sort of you, you mentioned energy a couple of times how much do you guys have to monitor being able to create that and i'm curious kind of what are some of the things that happen on the court like in a, a game like this that that kind of do inject the game with energy when it seems like it needs um i think for us we 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 kind of feed off ourselves and and um a lot of times we feed off the crowd but we got used to feeding off ourselves you know when when we go on runs you know like we had you know, tonight, you know, to start the game, you know, we usually have that crowd noise that, you know, Laker Nation, you know, cheering for us and giving us that spark. And then when they go on the run, um, you know, we combat that run. We, like I said, we had that noise. But now it's, it's, it's ourselves, you know. Um, you know, coach put a lot of emphasis on our bench to, to continuously to talk. Um, and it started in the bubble, um, knowing that we weren't going to have any fans. You know, we needed our bench to kind of be that, that fan base for us. Um, and we've done a good job of, of doing so, but uh, it is different not having the fans there, especially especially when we go on runs. You know, you're down, you're down 12, and you know coming back on that run. You know, even though we're able to complete it and, and finish the game and get the win, um, you know when you're in the playoffs or playing a you know you know a, another team, you might you might need those fans, um, especially when we're at home. So. Uh, we got to find ways to just continue to bring our own energy, you know, bring that noise, bring that positive energy to our group. Um, and I think we can get the job done. Last one, Yovan. Hey, AD. Um, this season, you're averaging a career high in assists. Um, and I'm curious, was that a point of emphasis for you in the short and off season? Or is that because you guys have more offensive weapons this season? Or, or what would you attribute that to? I'm just trying to add more to the game, to my game. Uh, I know a lot of teams try to double um, just to make me get a different look uh, and not score. So the best way to be the double team, you know, is, is to find an open guy. And our guys are making shots. Um, you know, I just got to do my job and draw a double. Once I do that, find the right guy, whether it's in front of me, you know, weak side corner, the big dab down in the middle, or whatever it is, I got to make the read. And, um, you know, that's how you make your team better. Uh, you, know, you know, I haven't been scoring you know, like you guys used to, but uh, I've been making the right plays and, and finding my teammates who've been doing a great job of knocking down shots um, and just and just continuously making plays for others. Uh, and it's, it's good that I have Mark here because I've been learning a lot from Mark as far as passing big from the top, from you know the, the elbow, from from the post. I'm um, just trying to figure out you know you know ways to kind of still that from him. You know, and also, Brian, you know, talking to me about that as well over the past couple of years. So, um, just trying to get better and, and you know, continuously add to my game.